Good morning. Uh, morning to planet Earth and welcome to Wild Earth Safari this morning. This is a very cold morning here at Juma Game Reserve. My name is Mark, Daniel is on camera and Craig back in final control. Just said giving him a hand. And we're on the open area near camp there was some zebra calling here only a few minutes ago, not too long ago. And I can't see them yet so we're going to head to the southern end and see if we can find them. And other than that, well, let's just go and see what we can find elsewhere. It's been a lovely weekend for us. Hope it's all, all you're all having a, a great weekend. Ooh, my mouth's not working in the cold air. But uh, we'll see if, find a, if we can find a nice spot for sunrise as well. But let's go for a ride. Three hours of pure Africa. And don't forget, this is fully interactive. Welcome to send in questions. Uh -huh. <coughs> <coughs> Morning everyone, just in case you didn't get me, wildebeest, well that's all. The wildebeest only just came back two days ago. Good morning, mobile, the zebra is an update. Uh, there's a zebra, oh, and the wildebeest are with them too, so they've all, they've all gone that side and then that way. Morning Henry, so far Luke just starting out. Oh, the other tracks are coming back to this way. So why the zebra were alarming. be below 4 degrees this morning, below 40 Fahrenheit. Where is the zebra now? And here are the These zebra impala, they don't all look very concerned about anything. was and I didn't see any tracks. Could have just been zebras fighting it, perhaps. Uh -huh. Let's go. Sorry. I chose to come this way. I just heard guinea fowl in the north and I thought, ah, maybe it's something up north. And that's the zebra and everybody is here. So it wasn't zebra fighting, everyone. We 
if you have a cat to go and find. Henry just found them. That's why there are no tracks either. Can I join you, Henry? Bunch of guests staying at Boyatella who are avid watchers of Wild Earth. Fans of ours, I suppose one could say. And us had dinner with them last night. They've had a fantastic time here at Juma. The only thing that they hadn't seen were lion and parting and saying goodnight last night. I said, oh well, today will be the day. Either I'll find lion for them or they'll find lion for me. And lo and behold. It has come to pass. Don't even have to drive up and down looking for tracks. yesterday. It rained its way off to our left. She continued along the same direction she was going all the way to Triple M. The pile of planes or power lines, Triple M area. Quite the distance. Here. Welcome to the Ustream viewers. Oh, there's a sunrise. We might get cats in the sunrise. To remind you that email address questions at wildearthsafari.tv. Feel free to send in a question. Today, Sunday morning. Well, I'm on the Zoe's road. Found them for me, thank you. <laughs> Heading down to quarantine. Oh, you want to go that way? Okay, you do this. I should have come the other way. And we'll go around, we'll follow them.
beautiful sunrise as well. See you later. Now I wonder who these boys are. Two big male lions coming down into camp. Slight lump in his back leg, back right. I was talking to you the other day, I was telling you how cats walk quietly. Now watch how he puts his neck to stop and watch him walking away. Watch how he puts his foot down, his front foot. It goes down on the side and then it rolls flat. Mm, let's make it over this bump. Boy, it's quite a dark line. Relax, dude. Very strong. Very strong smell of him. got a thorn in that foot because he did something that I do sometimes when I got a thorn in my foot stand on a stone and at that spot where there's a thorn and it kind of just pushes that thorn a little bit touches the nerve looks like he did that now I stood on a thorn some time ago and it's still in his foot and he just stood on a stone now that must have just touched that spot where the thorn is Guessing. It's just that that's what I felt when I saw him wince. Oh, beautiful light on him. And again. Ubezi, the Zulu name for a big male lion, or Ngala, Shangan, everybody knows Swahili, Simba. Boy, he's a little bit darker than his brother up ahead by the looks of things. His brother's looking back this way. Let's see if we can zoom in on him. Waiting for this one. Quite a blonde lion, the other one. It looks like, even looks perhaps a bit bigger. Hard to tell with them two. The two of them so far apart. I'm open to suggestions from any of the viewers who you might think they are. This boy is quite dark. He's got pretty dark markings on the back of his legs, but that might just be dirt. And that blonde lion up ahead. Quite a distinctive man. Like he might be marking territory. Yep, spray marking this old boy and scratching his feet. Just sprayed against the bushes. 
don't seem to be too concerned with the vehicle. He is watching Henry to his side, but he's not too concerned. They're approaching the lodge now. They're just, just passing the turn off into our camp and the staff village where we where we emerge from onto this road. And pretty soon they're gonna be heading straight down towards the dam and also spraying. make their way between Yuri's house and the lodge. It's nice that Lion can read a sign, the no entry sign there on the left. Quite amazing. There must be a noise of staff. Staff village is less than, less than 50 yards away. The staff of the lodge are not waking up, getting ready for work today. <coughs> That's probably a lot of them are at work already. the lodge knows. I'm sure Henry would have told them. But Craig wants me to send them to FC because it's nice and warm in the office. Okay, rub it in, Craig. Rub it in. Look at the light on his face. He's listening to people now. He must have stopped and was listening to staff. Joel as well was behind us, bringing fuel into the reserve. I wonder if that's our fuel. Crossing onto quarantine now. The other brother. Cindy, morning to you. How many lion on the reserve? Gosh, I don't know, Cindy. Um, a lot. I, I guess the difference between the lion, the numbers of lion in Kruger versus the numbers of lion here in the Sabi Sand. And it's never a steady figure because the lion are crossing between the two, as well as Manyaleti Game Reserve. <coughs> looking out onto the open area, probably looking for all those wildebeest and zebra that they were at. They must have chased earlier. That's why I heard the zebra. It's probably because those zebra saw these two. Oh, that other male is beautiful. That blonde male. A little bit lighter color. They're on the hunt, definitely. On the lookout for something. I'm starting to complain. I'm surprised the baboons aren't shouting yet. Maybe they're not here. A bit of luck they're not here. Hello, Laura. Do lions ever get close to our camp? Well, this is next to our camp, Laura, but yes, we've had a couple of prides walk right through our camp, through the car park, past our parked vehicles, outside FC. What would it do if we saw one by our side? Hard to tell. We've got to... Depends on what the lion's doing, Laura. It wouldn't just appear at your side, but... Um, one would have to react. Ah, there the baboon is starting to shout now. So the 
the boon, are you? It's pretty hard to, to predict what one would do because you have to react according to what the cat does. You're probably both going to get a fright. You're probably both going to go separate ways. We now have the spot where the Kahumas killed that wildebeest a few weeks ago. Let's get onto that little road and get in it. They're going to be heading towards those wildebeest. I see the impala up ahead. They're heading straight towards those wildebeest and, and zebra. Now, Henry, there's a lot of uh, wildebeest and zebra up ahead. So far, I'm looking at zebra still grazing. Can't hear any alarm calls from Impala up ahead. Just that fence on the left side of the picture is the fence that surrounds the house of the owner of Juma. His name is Yuri. Move up ahead. See wildebeest and zebra still grazing. A few of the impala have their heads up and are looking this way, but I don't think they've seen the lion yet. Now it's a matter of whether these cats are going to head down to the dam or carry on straight towards Yuri's sister's house, which is Inga's house. There we go, that, ooh, that would be such a nice shot. The zebra in the background, they're watching. The most incredible light, just the most perfect time of the day to see something like this. Impala starting to alarm. The zebra haven't lifted their head though. Now they're lifting their heads, looking around a little bit seems to be lion or maybe going to ignore or maybe they'll go into the bush and try and come out of the bush my word look at that why don't, why don't I have my camera up and there they start moving zebra and wildebeest starting to run in the background Love to know who these boys are. Yeah, a lot of the impala and will actually approaching now. They are coming closer as they alarm, as they're shouting. Coming closer to be able to keep an eye on what these cats are up to. down to the dam now. I've just lost my camera. You know what I've done with it? Very weird. There it is. 
lying down on a, on a roll. And see where my camera was. Oh, they're going off into the bush. They might then do the turn back up to, sneak back up to the open area through the bush. But I think they're cutting through to Twin Dams Road now. Thank you, Jody. Jody saying she doesn't think it's either my pokos or my jingis. Well, it's definitely not my pokos. They're too small, too young. They're fairly. They're not as old as the, the my pokos. That was the zebra and wildebeest that are following everybody, sort of coming down this way. To keep an eye on these lion. How long we're going to be able to stay here? There are other vehicles that are already making their way here. Now, Annette was asking, "Is it usual to see two male lions together?" Yes, it is, Annette. It is the nature. It is the the behaviour, or or rather the 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 life of male lions is. Oh, look at this! What's this? Rhino tracks going up to quarantine. Big rhino during the night. Any of you at the dam or uh, were watching the camera during the night? Did you see the rhino? Up along Cassidy. Along Cassidy. Thank you, Penny. About 1,800 lion in the park. For Cindy, I think that was. Approaching the dam. So, if anyone's operating the camera at the dam, you should be able to see these lion approaching for the dam cam. Henry, Iman, Iman, the gallery. Uh, Henry's also saying new lion. He doesn't know who they are. Maybe it's from those ones that we had. Maybe they're the two from those other four that. Six of them in total. Geese are going crazy at the dam now. Evidently a new coalition of six. Um, to answer that question about males living together. In any way from one to a dozen males. Depends on how big the pride is. They don't necessarily have to be blood brothers, litter mates. But they will be pride brothers. And you normally find that within the pride of lion, you generally find that... around this way a little bit. You generally find that the lionesses in a pride will come into estrus together so that they have cubs at the same time. And that's important because cubs of different or, or two different uh, age groups would have a problem in, in especially at times when they're, they're starting to feed on carcasses. Guys, go across the dam. In the meantime, I want to 
is it can't get a shot from here through the steam and the sun and this light this might be interesting it's coming here this is where the, the camera used to be on this little tree stump here these geese are going crazy but we might get these oh they're lying on the damn wall now oh, sorry jacana i thought they would be crossing the dam Lying actually in the shade, lying together. I think our angle is all wrong. Yeah. able to see I can see the dam cam so where was I yes the cubs generally have to be about the same age within a few weeks of each other to be successful to be to have a greater chance of, of surviving when they start feeding on the carcass if there's too big an age gap between litters of cubs in the same pride the older cubs will dominate and, they, and, and the younger cubs will, will be pushed out on a kill and, and they'll just be bullied so nature makes it that lionesses come into estrus together and what happens is a lot of well the males within the, the pride all the young males once they start reaching three and a half, four years old, they've got to leave home and go and seek out their own little niche. Oh, their eyes coming through the, the mist. There we go. Peggy Ox. Just to, just to interject. They're walking with a purpose. Are they looking for females? I really don't know, Peggy. I don't think so. If they were looking for females, they'd be roaring. I don't think they're walking with that much of a purpose. They do have a particular direction that they're walking in. And also, they would hunt if they found anything. I think that's a little bit too much into the sun, but that's the effect that I wanted. There's the steam rising off of the dam. I think that's that's quite incredible. That is so surreal. That's just we're looking directly into the sun and we've got double sun because it's reflecting off of the water so unfortunately there is a bit of lens flare but I just wanted that effect of the surreal light and the steam coming off of the water we'll make our way across the dam now what is up with these geese I think it's a, it's, a, it's a completely different issue going on there with the geese. It's got nothing to do with the lion thing. It's just a goose thing. So the young males, when they they leave a territory, they will they will band together. Right, let's get out of here. These males then roam together for some time. They might stay together and take over a territory. They become a formidable force. They might split up 
evidently these are part of a group of six that have split up into three twos. So I guess to answer the question, it's perfectly normal to see my lions together. Amy wanting to know, yeah, those geese are fighting. No, it's flown away now. The last time we had geese fighting like that, Induna came out of the bushes and caught one of them. Oh yeah, that's because the land was in an angle. I'll catch up with these lions. Amy, would we intervene if these lions attacked the mother leopard, the ruler? Well, I don't know how much I could do against two male lions. Look, theoretically, technically, um, no, there's nothing we could do. Absolutely nothing we could do, nothing we should do, nothing we are allowed to do. This is nature, this is how it's been happening, this is what's been going on for millions of years. Just because we get emotionally involved with something doesn't mean that we can interfere. That is what happens. So, uh, it would be a sad thing that the, 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 the saving grace is that Karula would take to a tree. Right? And she, I've seen male lions with leopards before. And in fact, two big males once in the southern part of the central part of the Savi Sand with one of our male leopards that we really got to like very well. I got to know rather. And. Uh, Ah, leopard just climbs into a tree, gets away from the lion. It takes it's a sleeping leopard that gets caught by a lion. Even then, it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen very easily. Leopard that kill leopard. More than lion killing leopard. I'm saying there was a report of a dark mane, Majingi male, with a limp on his back right leg. Well, possibly. I have to be honest, I can't tell. I'm only mostly seeing the back of these two. And even so, I haven't, I don't know the Majingi lines by sight. I haven't seen them often enough to be able to recognize any one of them by, by sight. Central Road now. Deborah wants to know how old lion are before they start hunting effectively. <coughs> Well, since lion are social and they hunt as a, as a team, as a, as a pride, they hunt together. The youngsters, probably at about the age of two, start participating in the hunt. But I don't think they'd be very successful if they were on their own at the age of two. They still got to rely on the expertise and the experience of the older females within the pride.
nothing but a permanent limp. It's just every now and then it's like he stands on something and it. Takes his uh, pressure he puts on his foot. Getting a bit of grass now. Is going to the toilet up the road. Hold your nose, hold your breath. Oh, look, they're lion tracks. The sand is still crumbling inside the tracks. Oh, wait. Maybe it has something to do with the lion in the road up ahead. Paybacks are big, Armand. Who was there? Somebody was asking, are the females more effective in hunting than the males? Uh, the Sandy, sorry. Um, it depends, Sandy. It dep not necessarily. In some instances where the males are needed and it's the, the, the size and weight and strength of the males that that help in bringing down large prey like buffalo and, and giraffe and in places where they do hunt the elephant the elephant but hmm, wonder who that is up ahead I'm not letting me know uh, these people from other property. Talk, talk on the radio. Um. So, I guess in some ways the females are more effective in that they have quite interesting and uh, specific hunting methods depending on what it is that they're hunting and what the terrain is, what the conditions are like. Where each lioness has a particular function. When it comes to the male, it's just his size and his brute strength that he just comes barging in when he does participate in the hunt with the females.
I'm going to try and stay with them as long as I can because, in fact, heading up Central Road by the Tai well, they just keep in this direction. They could leave this property in the next 15, 20 minutes. Oh, please don't bring them. Oh, gee, it would have been just so nice watching them in the distance. Hmm. Sydney must have missed my answer. Uh, Mark Yaga? Uh, I'm approaching Nyala Road North and Nyala Road South Junction. Um, I, want, I, would, I would suggest it's probably going to be easier if they're carrying on east on Central Katla. Do you know where our central road is coming off Chile Cut Line? Or maybe you might know Nyala Road South. Okay, if you get onto Chile Cut Line, just have a look at the roads that head west from Chile Cut Line. You'll look down one road, there's a tree across the road about 100 meters down. That's, that's uh, Mamba Road, and then you'll take the next big one left. Okay, thank you. smelling something there's something you see now what he's doing is it's called the phlegm and grimace they're both doing it they're passing scent over their jacobson's organ in the back of the throat and that is telling them a lot of information and it's possibly because a lioness has perhaps been spraying there and it could have been two weeks ago that a lioness was here or even another lion and that what looks like a snarl, what looks like a, 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 an aggressive facial expression is actually opening up uh, in passageways to get the scent to pass over the Jacobson's organ. So there's something very important, a very important message for these lions on that bush. Cindy, yes it is common to see two male lions together answer your question male lion that grow up together in a pride when they get to a particular age will leave the pride together and stay as a group and once they become adults if they're still together they form a coalition as a as, as a strong unit that will take over a territory and the more males they are the stronger the territory they can hold and the more females they can mate with them the more cohesive the pride will be. <coughs> these are even, these, I don't know. Henry said that these are two males from a group of six males. Brotherhood of six, or coalition of six. I have to be honest, I don't know who they are. If we saw Lion a lot more frequently. The problem is we drive around a lot and we see a lot of different animals. But if I spent time only with lion, it would take me maybe only a couple of weeks to get used to all of them. 
So who they all are. So we're going to see if they're going to go north of Aina Road or whether they're going to go east still. No, they're still heading east. We just have to be patient. There are guests that are in these vehicles that have to see them. <coughs> I would like to stay with them. It's possible that with other vehicles coming in, we're going to have to move out. But so far, not. I don't know if that scent was two weeks old. I'm just saying it's possible that it was two weeks old. But Peggy was asking if they're smelling something at two weeks old. Does that mean the rain won't wash it away? The rain does dilute it somewhat, but they will still smell it. Weeks later, apart from the fact we haven't had any rain, but uh, they're cutting through now. They're going into the bush now. cut through to send to Nyala Road South. I wish circumstances were somewhat different. I don't know what this gentleman is doing in front of us, but uh, he doesn't know about sharing a site. Diane, New Zealand. How old do I think these lying off? Diane, I'd say they're probably about five. Lying in their prime. <coughs> Reaching first just with a prime age of five, six years old. Head He's banging his way down towards the other road side. Oh, oh. He's making his way. They missed the junction with the other road south on Central Road, which means they missed that patch of water. But there's quite a lot of water down there. The thing is, if they wanted to drink, they would have 
they would have drunk it Gary Dam. Water's on the agenda. End of the day is a better time for drinking water. Station on Central Road in Pongala. The station in Pongala have headed turned in south and now uh, on Yala Road south. Okay, I think the end of my radio communicated. Angola now on the red south. No, I've got pretty bad problems here, but uh, I'm not so sure who. Uh, I've just seen somebody on Central Road past me. I was just south of you, off road. Um, there's a dip in the drainage line. That's got some water in it. It's the two roads that, that it's a four way junction. Hello, look there. The saw poor preventing the lion from hunting the zebra. No, Linda, not at all. I just didn't want to hunt. Poor is not that bad. Morning. The radio is not so great. They've just gone into this Rovani now. They might be coming back towards Central Road. Let's see if we can get it, get it from here. Um, And then as for are they patrolling their boundaries, I don't know Linda, I don't think that these are part of their boundaries, they might be forming boundaries by spray marking the way they are. But it's very difficult to say what these lions are doing or why they didn't hunt or what they're up to, considering, well, these radios are not working so well. Now, oops, hello Starling. early to be playing in the mud, don't you think? Thank you, Karen, for talking about the timber mail from Manuleti. He has a scar on his left rump, or rather right rump. He wants to have him get this thorn out of the. Daniel's the one that's supposed to get this thorn out of the lion's paw. Mark, no, Mark didn't have anything to do with my. No, we can't do much about the thorn in the lion's paw, I'm afraid. Daniel's saying he would, just have to ask nicely. I don't know, maybe we'll get stuck here. How's that tire looking? Is it going in deep? Very muddy. Very deep. 
deep holes there where elephant poops could be digging. A lot of water. Surgery morning. I wanted to know if the animal died of natural causes, would Karula or the lion eat it? The lion more than Karula. Lions are pretty heavy scavengers. In fact, there are times and places, times and places that lions can scavenge more than hyena. Um, but yeah good chance that they would feed on an animal that has died. So these boys are moving into a place where we're not going to be able to follow them anymore. Morning Lindsay. Whoa. Our old male lion, before they leave the pride that their mother belongs to. Let's see if we can try this way. Oh, here's some rocks. Rocks. Big chunks of granite. Might get that. I might be able to follow them out to Bacalier Road, but I doubt it. Very much doubt it. I know where they're headed. They're he heading into that, that very eroded section of bush. here from these elephants digging for water and the deal with questions at the moment folks just give me a moment Two drainage lines, the one we've just been battling with to get here, and another one coming into it, and we're, <coughs> we're at a spot that I'm not going to get out of very easily, hang on a sec.
Dementsprechend ab Schloss Büssel, diesem Gala, der hat von Fuß gewonnen. Der hat von Scott heading probably towards Bachelor Road. The problem with that is we know we're out of there. There's a 20 foot drop just behind us. So the only option is actually just to go back a little way that we came, just to try and squeeze back through here. We might be able to get out onto Nyala Road South. But at least I get to see this little area. It's quite amazing. Yeah. A lot of milk berries here. A lot of milk berries here. Yeah. Very old one. Or is it a jacket plum? Actually, I think it's a jacket plum. <coughs> no, it's a jacket plum. Tambotis, jacket plum, a bunch of interesting trees here. Right, now, to get out of here, maybe let's try and turn around and do it forward rather than backwards. <coughs> I've lost track of questions, but I'll get back to questions in a minute. This just needs a little bit of concentration because of the angles that we're driving at. And difficult terrain. I think they went through here in front of us because there are no tracks down that little pathway going that way. It would have been fine if this knob thorn, no, it's black monkey thorn, that wasn't pushed over. I could have just gone straight through there. bottom of this cliff that we were at a few minutes ago. We were up there on our left. Beautiful area this. And we'll see if we can't get out this way to the other road south. And go around to Battle Road. Uh, pretty pretty steep. We're out of gap in the trees.
No. Would have been possible except that wind storm blew down half a tree in front of us. Okay, well, the only option we have now is going back the way we came. Let me just go and see how bad it is. Look, so we're just going to clear a path so we can drive through. The road is just there. It's a matter of getting up there. I'm out of breath for moving a few branches, but that was quite a heavy one. Nothing like. Yeah, it definitely shows how unfit I am sitting in a Land Rover or an FC or in front of a computer. Okay, that was easy enough getting off. if it's just as easy to answer these questions. Keep your eye out on the left there. The sun glistening through, shining through the manes of a couple of metal lines. Franklin's, excuse me children. Five of them run off the road, but there's always got to be one that runs along the road. Come on. Thank Franklin Powell. Let me just 
looks like because it's cold and hot up. My, uh, my experience, what animals do lions prefer to eat? Uh, zebra wildebeest tend, I'd say, make up quite a large portion of their prey preference. Some prides like to eat buffalo. Buffalo is another one. Hello, Nyala. run off into the bush. See now there's an amazing area through there where they could have ended up. But we'll go around onto Battle here just to check. Battle Road's not too far away. Probably they've probably gone quite far by now. Buffalo and giraffe so maybe more buffalo than giraffe in some in most cases. Lion love buffalo. But they will go for things as small as impala. Not easy for them to get something as small as a daker or a steenbuck. But they are opportunists. And quite often when they're hungry and they want to hunt, they will take on anything that they find. Oh. A little bit of warmth that I got from doing a bit of exercise has dissipated already. Cold again. Glenn and Michelle. Thank you for your email saying that they actually buy 2,000 oaks. 10,000 oaks. I guess they've been breeding and growing and multiplying since the town was named 1,000 oaks. How come the animals don't fear us? How come they don't run away? And yes, Michelle and Glenn and Michelle and Glenn. Glenn and Michelle. All the animals here, except for a few elephants that come through, but every other animal that lives here has been born to vehicles driving around. And what is more, more important just, than just vehicles driving around is the fact that there's a pretty much a consistency in the behavior of the vehicles, their rules about how to behave with these animals. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen in Kruger, but then, in, then again, even in Kruger, the elephants in Kruger, no matter how old they are, there have been vehicles driving around during their lifetimes. So there isn't an animal alive today that hasn't seen a vehicle. Or maybe in some remote parts of Kruger there are, but most of these animals that move over fairly large distances are familiar with vehicles. They've all been through a very similar process of growing up exposed to vehicles what are elephant tracks here heading up the way we're going and um, they learn that the vehicles are not a threat they learn for the lion and, and other predators through the process of learning that they go through they know that the vehicles are not food or that they're not associated with food so they're not a threat to us they can be. I've had some hairy moments with lion. Lion that don't see vehicles too often. And are perhaps a little wary of vehicles.
Oh, okay. Up shoot. No tracks here. Good morning. Uh, no. The dark is up here. Because they were coming through this drainage line towards us, so they would have crossed here. Maybe gone up to Mumba Road. Just got one, yeah. One just now. On Batalia? Yeah. Okay. Morning, everyone. was I saying um, yeah just that the animals are quite used to us they allows us to view animals behaving naturally rather than animals that are afraid of us running away from us all the time Ah, Lindsay, yes, that was one that I forgot, I didn't get to. Lindsay was asking how old the young males when they leave the pride their mother belongs to. About three, three and a half years old, Lindsay. When they start developing their mane and they start becoming a... or being a perceived threat to... I'm going to leave this area for the time being. We've had a fantastic morning with the lion. There guys all over the place looking for them now. One of them came out onto this road, but he's gone back into the riverbed. Ah, maybe this is him up front. Oh, he is there. Well, we still here. Jock, come in. I'll mark here behind you. Can I pull in? Okay, so we are back with them. Um, they start posing a threat to their father, but then they also start maturing, and then by maturing, they then have a likelihood of mating with their own family members. So it's imperative that at about that age, when they're reaching maturity, about that age that it's necessary for them to move on. And generally they'll become a little bit nomadic, they'll become nomadic for some time. Until they're about five years old. They're not old enough to establish or take over a territory at the age of three and a half, four years old, they're still a little young and a little bit immature, not strong enough to be able to compete with other males. Let me just, sorry, let me just get space here to these other guys. I wonder if there's something in the in this dense bush beyond him. Seems to be listening to something. His brother's coming up at the back. Oh, 
there's something in there that they're interested in. Or he seems to be showing some interest in. This is the darker male. His brother, his brother is approaching now. <clears throat> I can't take decent photographs into the light like this, but I'm trying at least to maybe get an identification out of this photograph. Vivian, hello there. lion marking territory to claim territory or just from being here I th I'd say just by being here they just spray marking I don't think they would be uh, here you are hey old man I'd say he's definitely got a thorn in his foot the way he's limping every now and then he stands on something and causes him to limp yeah, his brother's spraying now through I'll probably come out at Drakensburg the problem with trying to ascertain what it is they're doing by spraying us it's going to take time to find out it's nothing that I can answer really because it's a, a drama that has to play itself out if 
they stay here. If they happen to decide to establish this as their territory, then we could say in retrospect that yes, they are marking territory to take over. But at this stage of the game, I think they're just marking. They're just marking to advertise that they've been here. Now, if other males come through here, like Majingi lions, if these are not Majingi lions, unfortunately the Kajimas won't be. But if other male lions come through here and they smell that, and these other male lions are territory owners, they would then roar and perform, and these guys would then get an idea of what they're up against, and then either be a fight and the territory take over or not. Right. Another bigger pan further up, they might lie down. Move up. In fact, we were trying to try and Karuga here the other day, walking almost the same path. Ah. 
There's a reason why I'm staying with these lions, mainly because we don't get visits by male lions very often. We try and get to see lions as often as we can. But lions' territories are a lot larger than the area that we have to cover. And so it's a matter of luck, I suppose, in some ways, when we have lion coming through our area. And it's kind of, there he is, spraying again. I wonder what would happen if I had to go and spray on top of that. Hello Dr. AVK in Kazakhstan. Wonderful to hear from you. A part of the world we don't hear from too often much. Nice to hear from you. Have you ever thought about a lion jumping into the car? Yeah, it does cross my mind from time to time. Um, but it, it, it's not l likely. They haven't ever done it before, so it wouldn't really occur to them to do so. Anyone can copy me, the two guys are headed south towards west, towards Mamba Road, uh, between Batelier and Mamba Road, along the pans. They uh, should be coming out onto Mamba Road soon. Here we go again. had water in a few days ago, it's now dry. Lots of rhino tracks. Sniffing around again, they've picked up the scent of something. Okay, I'm stopping. Just looking back at me with a bit of a warning to say, we're busy. Something they're smelling there, both of them very interested in the smell of something on the ground. Brothers in arms. Fleming again. He's got some distinctive scars, this blonde lion. I noticed when he walked past us, right in front of us. Just now. He's got some quite distinctive scars on his face and his nose. F L E H M E N Fleming. Noticing that they spray marking their territory, well, spraying at least, whether it's their territory or not, is another matter. 
and it wants to know if it's a specific distance or a specific tree that they spray. I uh, so most of the time it's, it's when they pick up the scent of something else, uh, when scent starts fading. I guess it has something to do with distance. It doesn't really have anything to do with a specific treat. I, uh, distance has some some role to play in that. Um, we're gonna get stuck in this bush now. It's pretty thick here. Yeah. easy for them, they just walk straight, I find my way through gaps in the trees, I don't want to push too many trees over, although some of them that I do push, I try and straddle the tree so that it springs up when we get past it. Horses, yes, Lori. Horses also do the flemming grimace. They also, most mammals do. Only us humans don't have the Jacobson's organ. Telling my own future here. I see myself changing the wheel in my near future. <laughs> Fanny's saying she's sending bubble bubble wrap for the camera and a helmet. For Daniel, because of my off-road antics, I have to. Uh, why didn't you see how the other guys drive off-road? I'm very careful. I'm, I'm very gentle. You see how some of these guys crash through bushes. But Daniel's saying he needs a thornproof jacket. Vehicles there already must have heard us driving through the bush. Well, they nearly burst the tire. Maybe we can push this combritum aside. Lift this up. Um, hold on to it.
I'm guessing they've gone through now to Ledwood Road. Just gonna wait until this vehicle comes past. If he's coming past. Deborah, morning to you. I feel a little bit frightened getting out of the vehicle. Um no, it is. A, it, look, it is a little exciting, and it is. I, I knew that they had gone. I wouldn't have got out the vehicle if they were still within earshot. If they were still fairly close. Um, but having said that, <coughs> I spent most of my life in the bush on foot. Bumped into lions on foot a lot. I'm confident that I could behave myself. If I were to see them, but under the circumstances today, well, they were far enough away that I was confident enough they wouldn't. They might have heard me, but they didn't see me. I didn't go far, you know, I was within few yards of the vehicle but I wouldn't say frightened I mean, I <coughs> it can get a little bit hairy sometimes when you are on foot and you walk doing walking safaris and you bump into sleeping lions but one has to keep one's head all, at all times well aware of what they're capable of but at the same time, one knows that they are, and can be a little bit timid, big as, as, as fierce as lion can be. They don't like humans very much, they do tend to, I wonder if we can go through there, Let's try. distinct pathway here and they might so end up with and they might be following. Animal this might bring us out to those pans that's called Ledwood Road. close to go through that gap. Make my way around this big turn up now. Another reason it's nice to stay with them is because they might, now that it's getting a little bit warm, they might settle down for the day and it would be nice to be able to find out where they are for the guides, the guides this afternoon. But now that they are lying down, 
and we'll be able to look at faces and I'll be able to bring out my little cards and I can write down some details about scars and whisker spot patterns Hello Shirley Have I got a gun with me? No Shirley, I don't believe in guns, I don't like guns Guns are a terrible thing Take my chances. Um, the guides that are driving with guests are legally obliged to carry weapons, weapons of a caliber that is big enough a beetle lava has got going to start eating the Land Rover. Sorry, I've got this sidetracked there. This is all my matchbox. I didn't take it out yesterday with that beetle lava. Now, um, Shirley, as far as guns are concerned, um, we don't carry a gun because we not. We don't have to protect any clients, guests, and we're not normally in a situation where we'd have to use it. Right. No, don't put your head down. I want to see your spot pattern. If anyone can copy me, he's in Gala now, Lala Pansy, just off Battlefield Road. See those two spots. I just heard something moving in the bushes. Let's see. We've got today is what twenty sixth or something. Oh, he's quite scarred on his nose. What did you hear, Mr. Lion? You're going to catch something. There's something moving about in this bush. Brother's staying here with some interest. And he is now moving off with some definite interest. I can't hear anything, but they definitely can. He's got quite a nick in his left ear. That's an interesting feature. So there. He's got a nick in his left ear. Change the battery. Okay, we've got to change the battery now. On the camera. And Hunting time. I wonder if one brother is going to go and chase the other, whatever it is, towards this brother. so we can see them moving behind bushes for the camera. <coughs>
have no idea. I can see some. I can see branches moving about 50 yards in. Ouch. JJ wants to know how tall these boys are at the shoulder. Well over, well over a meter, JJ. I don't know what it is up ahead, but there's something up ahead that moving trees, moving branches. There's a big Tambuti tree on our right. This might be where the pan is. Might be. Where we come off from Ledwood Road. Sound like a monkey. Bush buck. I can't hear them. Could be bush buck. Sound like one of the antelope barking. But that's so far ahead. I can't believe whatever it was that was alarming so far away could even see these two. Maybe there's something else much further up. Yala barking. Patience of a cat, both of them standing dead still. something not very far up ahead of them. I don't want to move too much, I don't want to disturb things too much. And that's starting to sound like kudu in the distance. There's a Franklin complaining. Hello Raisa. Has anyone identified them as not being Majingalans? Because they seem to look like Majingis to Raisa. I'm just thinking that the, the area that they're moving in right now, they're quite familiar with by the looks of things. And I'm starting to think that maybe it is Majingis. There's a very distinct scar in the spot pattern on the left side of the face of the darker lion. And this other lion has got some pretty serious scars, from even some from some recent fighting. Still settled down now. And now I'm going to move a little bit.
them in. Asking about these lions' tails twitching like leopards. Now lions don't have expressive tails like leopards. Lions' tails do tell a story, especially when they're angry. When you're on foot and you see that black tip to a lion's tail thrashing from side to side. There's a buffalo down here. It's sleeping as well. And these two big males are quite capable of taking a big male buffalo. What we're going to do is we're gonna park ourselves in this rise. Near this buffalo. He's not sleeping, he's just lying down. Open patch of ground. Now, where did Buffalo go? I just saw him a minute ago. He was behind the bush. See buffalo, and I want to see. Oh, there he is, yes, facing away from the lion. And he's just chewing his cud, he's only listening to us, but not really concerned about us. Aha, there's lion. Unfortunately, well, there are a couple of buffalo. I see another one moving about there. There are a couple of buffalo, and two of them are just bumping heads a little bit. So they're oblivious to the presence of these two boys, and this could be interesting. We've got a nice little patch of ground that's very open next to us. Really thick Tambuti forest all around. I don't think that big Tambuti tree up ahead of me is that one that I was thinking of next to the pans off of Ledwood Road. So I'm not, this terrain is not familiar. This could take all day that they sit and watch these buffalo. There's a, it's a fairly easy stalk. There's a drainage line between them and the buffalo, some fairly thick bush, and they could get fairly close. Ox pickers coming in. Now you see that could work in the buffalo's favour. I haven't heard any ox pickers yet chirping around the buffalo, but I've just heard some ox pickers arriving. And the reason why I say that is because ox pickers are quite vigilant. The buffalo might be sort of lying down, chewing the cud, with his eyes closed, not being very aware of visual stimuli around him. He's obviously hearing things a lot. The ears are always turning and listening. 
But the buffalo are always in the company of oxpeckers, and it's the oxpeckers that are likely to hear and rather see danger approaching. And the alarm calls of the oxpeckers are what can alert the buffalo that there are a lion about to pounce on them. Tattle tails. But as you know, those of you who are cat people, cats have infinite patience. Cats will sit and watch and wait. And as long as they're sitting and watching and waiting, and as long as we've got a little bit of time, I'm not going anywhere. They could make a move at any moment. I mean, it's only mild interest. I mean, they were st when they were standing up and almost pointing in this direction, they seemed to be about when they were the most interested in what was happening down here with these buffalo. Now they seem to be quite relaxed. a handsome fellow. Surely he wants to know, considering he's limping, will it hurt his chances for a kill? It will hinder him a little bit, but the rush of, an, of, of adrenaline to go for the kill will probably hide the, any pain and his brother will probably make the first move and he'll just add his power and strength and weight if they do decide to do something <laughs> You see the other one? Oh, I think he's directly behind this combretum.
<laughs> okay, what we're gonna do? I'm just gonna move a little bit so we can see the buffalo. It's kind of into this little clearing up ahead of us. Somehow, if we can't see, keep an eye on both buffalo and lion together. Second buffalo lying down facing. So they're watching each other's back, these buffalo. And I found a wild pair. Right next to me here, it's a wild pair. We don't have too many wild pairs on this property. I can see the lion from here, I can see one of them. Whilst that uh, apple leaf. I think there are one or two buffalo missing. I moved off. Sandy wants to know if the wind, whose favour is the wind? Sandy, if you look at these trees, there's barely a breeze blowing in the grasses. There's hardly any wind movement. But I'd say at the moment it's in the favour of the lion. If the buffalo got a whiff of the lion, they would be up and alert. But uh, the lion are a little bit northwest of these buffalo, and the prevailing wind is from the southeast. Oh, now there's a bit of a breeze picking up. Every now and then. Just a little gust of wind. station copy me The fact that they're not making a move or anything yet might have something to do with the fact that these buffalo are sitting back facing opposite directions. Whether it is a defensive tactic of the buffalo to sit like this, I'm not sure. That's certainly saving both of them at the moment. Here's a Bertil's cuckoo coming to visit.
Well, that's pretty cool. Do some bird watching while we're waiting for something to happen. Up there in that knob thorn is. Oh, here's the kukul again. Skulking through the. Hmm? Up there. Sitting in the sun, preening. There we go. Beautiful bird, the crested barbet. B A R B E T. Related to woodpeckers. They also dig holes in trees, on overhanging branches, or underneath overhanging branches. Woodpeckers tend to dig a hole in the vertical trunk, and the barbers tend to dig a hole underneath an uh, underneath an, an angled branch. Harder for snakes to get in, and of course, it becomes weatherproof. Come on, lion! What are you doing? Buffalo, I'm going to sit around all day waiting for you. The lions. No, nobody's cued the lions. They say you want to raid. Yeah. The top of that knob thorn is a big green dense clump. <coughs> <coughs> yep, up there. 80%, 90, no, in fact, 90% yep, of the leaves up there are not from that tree. And the plant that is in there is a creeper known as the woolly caper bush. And it's actually the caper family, Caparissa. The cultivated capers are different. I don't think you could take caper, the, the, the flowers from that one and use them the way we use capers but it is the same family as the capers that we eat caparissa using the knob thorn for support Are you copying me, Henry? Okay, I can get you about one out of five. Um, I don't know about an update. I've been out of I've been out of comms for a while. Oh. Uh, where are you now? Uh, 
Ladies and Gala are watching some Manyari between Ledwood and Batalea. No, they're still watching. You see that pale sort of off green tree, the tall one? Yeah. That's an apple leaf. And then to the left of it is a bush willow, straight between the two. You see he's shaking his ear. But then there's a sickle bush in between him and you, so that might be blocking it. I can go forward a few inches, and you might be able to, in fact, you will be able to see him if I go forward a couple of inches. But yeah, between those two trees. Hello, Shirley. was watching, Shirley was watching the birth of an elephant in some program, wanting to know if we came across an animal giving birth, would we move on and give it privacy to come back later? Um, no, Shirley, I think that we'd stop and we'd watch it and film it, and it's a very interesting thing to see. Um, Oh, Buffalo's lying down. He's getting the nods. I was, I was about to laugh. That did, sorry, can you see him? Yeah. Yeah. Just see him through the bushes. No, hardly. It's not a great view. I could go forward or back. Back, like that. Forward, my I hope this isn't putting some of you to sleep, and for me it's quite tense. But it's hard to hold that level of tension because every now and then you think something's going to happen and then it doesn't. And these buffalo are just far too relaxed and oblivious for me to think that they even have a hint that there's lives. There's a, the terrain is the terrain is exceptional for a hunt here, ideal. Um, these lions came down into this drainage line, they were able to sneak around. It would probably take a while because they'd have to be very, very quiet. Yeah, that seems like the 
Yeah, well, they can get very close to these buffs before, and they could, uh, gee, they could probably be on it before it stood up, or while it's standing up. Uh oh, I don't know if you were on the buffalo there, yeah. but there's a bird off to our left that's alarming. And it can't be because of the lion, it should probably be because of us or something. It's a drongo. And he's just caught something. Uh. And he was probably shouting. Just Unfortunately, it's behind us. Some word people, I don't know if you see it. Just caught a very big grasshopper and he's pulling the wings off and the legs off. Cruel child. But they are not nutritious, they can't be digested, so there's no point in eating them. <coughs> well, it's amazing how those buffalo woke up so quickly with this drongo that was making a noise. I just see him through the leaves. Can't see what he's doing though. Just see movement. I can see a flower. I don't know if you see it from the back there, but. Yeah, almost. Just almost make out the fork tail drongo at the back. I think it's eaten the grasshopper already. Okay, next. We're just looking for things while we're sitting here, waiting for lions to. I can't see lion anymore. Can you see lion still through that gap? No, I want to look at that flower straight ahead and through this gap. But I'm just saying, with your eyes, can you see that lion? Oh, you don't have the glasses on. Can you see that flower, that cream coloured flower through there? Yeah. Time to take off some of my scarves. I can't get very close to the flower, but the flower nonetheless. And that is one of the Morning Glory family, either Ipamoya or Astripamoya. I think Lion have moved. And that might have been why Drongo was shouting. And then all we're doing is sitting here watching Buffalo to the cud. Okay, I'm going to move myself back to see if we can see these lions.
Tell me when it's a clear shot because there's a bush, a small raisin bush in the way. Pardon? No, oh, that's good. Yeah. Very handsome lion. Trying to catch a whiff of those buffalo. <coughs> the wind is picking up a bit. There's more of a steady breeze blowing now, coming in from the southeast. So at the moment, definitely in the lion's favour. And the batelier, there's a big batelier coming overhead. Going to do it. Not even looking at the lion. It must have just come out of the nest. Uh, I know where we are. Well, I've always known where we are, but I think we are fairly far from Leadwood still. Not going to be easy to get through to Leadwood, I don't think. We don't have that much time left. Let's go back closer to the lion so we can try and get some ID markings from them. That I didn't get because they started getting interested in buffalo. The brother just stood up, the blonde boy. Just, just stop for a minute, see what they're going to do. You can see the other buffalo now from this angle, just see his horns through the bush. Beyond those two that we were watching. That's an interesting shot, the two brothers. Interesting question, Annette. Does it depend on how hungry they are, how hungry they are, and how fast they go after their prey? Pretty much so. Yes. Sometimes they can be so hungry that they can they can be a little bit too hasty. Well, 
They might also be patient. They might also know exactly what they're doing. They're waiting for a, a moment that... They might also just hang around all day and only look, go, go for one of these buffalo tonight. They might sort of tail them, just keep track of them all day. And the sleepy cats lying here. Lying in the sun, it's going to get hot, they're going to seek shade. How much for getting some ID markings? But judging by what they're doing now, heads on paws and just almost dozing off, their ears will be listening, their ears will hear whether these buffalo get up and start moving around. And they're just biding their time, perhaps. Maybe waiting for darkness tonight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Susie wants to know if the buffalo are aware that these lions are watching them. No, Susie, not at all. If the lion, or rather if the buffalo knew, I better not talk too loud, I might give it away. The buffalo might hear me talk about the lion. And if the buffalo knew they were lion, they would stand up. They would probably run off, but they would stand up. 
and they would be looking in this direction. The fact that they were lying down and chewing the cud like they were is an indication that they're quite relaxed. They don't know what's going on. There was that one moment just before I saw that forktail drongo when it was screaming. It was giving off a, a very definite alarm call. Uh, for whatever reason, it wasn't because of the lion, but it drew the attention of those buffalo. And of course, the the, the drongo that was shouting was almost, I'd say about 150 degrees away from the lion. So the buffalo looked up and they looked in the opposite direction, almost. And looking in this direction. You just almost make them out through the trees from here. And these two boys are, well, head down sleeping now. Not quite flat cats. They are in a position where they can be up and on, on the run in a split second. So Anne and this boy looking at us now, that scar on his nose. So he was at Linda and thinking that this is the Majingi line called Smudge. Well, I'm starting to think it's Majingis. Oh, he's now gone flat. <coughs> so there's a good chance between now and tomorrow morning there will be a buffalo kill to come and view good chance if they're only a couple of hundred yards from Gary Main that they might disappear back south. Well, I think they're Matingulans because they, they seem to more or less know where they were. They seem to more or less, they seem, and the fact that they were spraying. I don't think intruding males would have the audacity to do something like that. Hello, Laurie. I think you answered your own question there. If hyena came along, who would give way? Hyena or lion? And yes, Laurie, it is mostly determined by numbers, but hyena, I don't think, are going to mess with two male lions. Esses and cubs would be might be a different story. And with these two big males, know, if there were enough hyena, the hyena might try and do something. There would be no reason for them to get into a scrap if there's no food involved. That's just putting yourself in danger of having an injury that's going to hinder your hunting ability. So it's not. I don't think it's likely that they would get into a, get into things. I think if the lion saw the hyena, they might want to chase them, or, or they might just glare at each other. Hard to tell what would happen. So 
but we're going to have to leave these children soon. That's just the way things are in nature. Sometimes it can get very exciting and tense and sometimes that tension can just dissolve in an instant when a lion puts its head down and goes to sleep 30 feet away from a buffalo. And I could say that we can stay here an extra few minutes and wait, but I think it's getting into a time of the day when these lions are probably just going to sleep and they will be more likely to do something this evening. I'll have to... Hmm? Buffalo on their feet. Yeah, buffalo stood up. I told you, if I talk about lion too much, they're going to hear me and they're going to know what, that we're sitting here with them. They seem to be a little bit alert. The wind's coming from the buffalo, so it's not that I don't think that they're smelling these lions. Okay, we are going to wait a few minutes because if the buffalo start moving around, the lion will hear it and then they'll get up, they'll sit up and... It might change things a little bit. Buffalo is going to lie down again. Facing this way. I don't know where the other one went. Oh, it's there, standing, looking at us. What if I just. <laughs> maybe it can. Roll back just to get a view of the buffalo. Well, I'll have to listen to the radio this afternoon when the drives come out try and guide them in here, I'll have to leave a branch for them for the PM safaris to come out and the guys can come and investigate It's going to take us some time to make our way out of here. So I'm going to say goodbye to everyone now. We're going to move moving on.
been a long time since we've been able to spend the morning, <coughs> excuse me, with a couple of male lion and have a kind of off-road, <coughs> excuse me, gosh, off-road adventure that we've had this day. Well, thank you very much for joining me and the lion and the buffalo. Thanks to Daniel on camera. My name is Mark and you've been with us here on Wild Earth Safari and we'll see you tomorrow morning, same time, 6.30 Central African time. Bye-bye, everyone. Buffalo are lying down. Lion is sleeping. I'm going to take the cube.